Hello and welcome. Today I have with me Body Complex Folbert, your new TMCL champion. What is it like to be the champ now? Yeah, oh, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I did not expect this going into it, especially after the the group stage. It was kind of really unexpected. So uh, I'm really happy. I'm still taking it all in, but uh, yeah, it's kind of surreal at the moment. Not gonna lie, we did not expect this at all, especially after getting sixth in the in the group stage. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then crawling our way back through the lower bracket, yeah. especially after uh, losing the last match of the group stage as well. It was like, ah, okay, we play BS Plus now. It's going to be a very hard first match because they were looking very good at the start of the stage. And uh, yeah, we played against them and all of a sudden it was going uh, way better as in uh, the group mm -hmm. stage. And then we were like, oh, this is going very well. Um, then... After that one, we had to play Sprout the Friday, and then it was also going really well. And then we were like, oh, everyone was cheering for us. Maybe there's a chance you'll beat attacks. And then I was like, ah, it's going to be way too hard because they were looking really prepared and consistent. But um, yeah, somehow we managed to, to clutch it out yeah. uh, somehow. <laughs> so I'm really happy. Yeah. And yeah. to be honest, Oryx and Malos were the dark horse for this uh, season. Like, we didn't expect you guys to win the whole thing but you definitely uh put in the work uh, in the end to do it um we, we could see that it's better than stage one but yeah did not expect you to win the whole thing like off the bat uh, but here we are uh and you said like you didn't really expect uh, to win it from the start so what were your goals from the start well to be fair like we didn't really have goals like like that we were just going into it like okay we can see how we are performing and then based on that we'll decide like um maybe top two is viable maybe we just fight for top six get like a good seeding in the playoffs because that's that matters a lot and uh, then we'll see from there and then we were starting to play stage two and it was looking all right i'd say um, we lost the first match against BS Plus, but it was a tough match. It was just very close. And then the other group stage matches were going okay in the start. Then we had the death win, of course. That was a small setback. And then we were just basically um, going for the top six after we lost against Atax. Because that was basically the only match. If we won that, that was our last save for top two. Mm -hmm. And the moment we lost that, we knew, okay, now we just... Need to get top six, refocus for playoffs, and then uh, see from there. That was basically it. Mm -hmm. Which match yeah. do you think along the way was the most difficult for you? Um, the match that was the most difficult? Um, I'd say Exalty was a really tough one for me. Like um, Just the group stage one, because I could not get into it. Then I was like, okay, this cannot happen again. I need to fix what's going on here. And... Then I'd say after that, everything went fine. Like maybe consistency wise, there were some points where I could improve a lot, but it wasn't like, okay, this was going horrible. But I'd say, uh, yeah, that group state match was a tough one for me <laughs> personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially as well with uh, Panda, he's, he was playing very good, really fast. And then, yeah, then you kind of fumble the bag yourself and then it's, it's, it's even more rough. So I'd say that one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's something I also wanted to talk to you about, uh, about you specifically. I mean, during the regular season, we saw Panda reach new heights and really get close to TMG level, TMGL level, if not on it. And mm -hmm. of course, you were still putting up some good times, but you were kind of lacking in the consistency department, let's just say. Many crashes, many mistakes. Uh, so what was going through your head at that time? Yeah, I was um, like, okay, I, I saw him be really fast in the warm ups. He was doing checkpoints I didn't really see before. And then I compared them to TMGL, and I was like, okay, it's actually also just ahead of the TMGL players. So then I was like, I need to kind of flip a switch where either I need to be more reliable and consistent, or we I need to push more and we need to get those aces where he's also in the same round. And um, then I kind of went for a more safe approach because I felt like it would be better also in the most pressure situations. And then we kind of just had maps he would be very fast on and he would push it a lot. And then I would kind of be laid back, chill, and try to just get through the map because I knew if he had a good run, he would get first almost every mm -hmm. time on the, the maps that he was good on. 
And that was basically the strat from there. We didn't really like prepare like, oh, I'm now going to be like the consistent factor, but it was just mm-hmm. kind of what automatically happened after seeing him just being able to push out those sick times. So that was... I mean, it, as you say, like this got way better in the playoffs. Like your consistency jumped a lot. It was very clear in the statistics, in those graphs that Lava TM makes uh, on Twitter. Uh, but and, and and you just became a great partner uh, to Panda, so you could guys uh, won the whole tournament. So uh, as you said, you just been more laid back. But was there more to it? Was there more work to uh, that you put in, like specific like training to be more consistent, or is it just I'll, I'll be more chilled out? Yeah, I I don't know exactly what the switch was. It was. Um like the week before playoffs where I was just like, okay, I'm just going to practice a little bit and I'll just play every map a tiny bit just to get through the maps and not even push it. Just do a time that I would be comfortable with. And then I would set the time and I was like, okay, what turns can I kind of uh, push a little more because I feel confident in this, in those parts. And then I would look at like uh, off road, for example. Uh, I was like, okay, if I push the identity, I feel very comfortable. If I push the ice, I feel comfortable. So I'm gonna just practice those parts a tiny bit in the editor, mm-hmm. or and then uh, I practice those. And I was like, okay, if I uh, am comfortable pushing this, I will just make this my main line now. And then I basically. Uh, went to the matches and normally you get those shaky feelings when you get to a part that's really hard and you're like oh am i gonna make it or not um but that basically faded away after that and i was like okay i feel comfortable doing this in matches now and then that was this huge switch for me mentally where it kind of translated to all maps where i was like okay if i just do whatever is comfortable and push only the turns that i like to push and even be fine with being a little bit behind then uh i'll just make that my strat from now on just do do that yeah mm-hmm. i have to ask about the reschedules there were many matches that were moved to, to different days and hours because of your availability at some point it got really confusing could you tell us a bit more about the reasons of those schedule changes and how did they impact your matches yeah so the we had um one basically rescheduled from our side most of them were actually from the other side, but we agreed at like the last moments. Uh, so the only ones that were kind of changed because of ours is the the playoffs one, if I remember correctly. Um, um, the other ones that were at the end of the group stage that got changed was because of Ascension. And the one against BS Plus was because BS Plus at the end, uh, they had sent a message, but it didn't come across. So we changed that match at the last moment because the, they could not play on the Saturday. I th- so, uh, excuse me, I just thought that uh, the match against Hominosun you had in the end and the ad- alternate attacks finals yeah, those were two, moved. Those, those two were on your... Yeah, on those your... were on ours because mm-hmm. uh, I, I basically could not yeah. be there the entire Saturday. And uh, I could only clutch it out like, before the Saturday and on the... The Sunday or Monday it was basically only the Saturday uh, evening and afternoon. I couldn't be there, so I PM'd uh, Softy earlier that week, like a week before it. Like, okay, what happens if we do make it to the Saturday? Because I probably cannot be there. And then he was like, okay, yeah, we'll we'll see when we get there because <laughs> we had to mm-hmm. crawl away through a BS Plus win, Sprout win. It was looking not very likely. And then. Um, yeah, we got there, and then it was basically like puzzling, like, um, are we gonna have to death win, or what? What's the plan? Because we asked around, and there was like rescheduling possible, at, like what happened in the end, but it wasn't really the the best for like viewers and stuff yeah. to just have like a really late notice on that. So it was really rough because it was the playoffs and because we never really changed the match before, uh, Softy gave us the green light. He was like, okay, we'll do this. It's very, like, it's not, it's not cool, but it's whatever, because a forfeit would also be just yeah. very sad. Yeah. So that ended up being the decision. And, uh, yeah, I, I would feel very bad for Panda because of my reason. I, yeah. I could not be there. And then the whole forfeit thing happens would be very sad but it ended up working out so yeah. thankfully <laughs> it worked out and we could see your 
whole way through the lower bracket into the finals into the championship and um that means that you guys are uh, confirmed for the all-stars and we have already got confirmation on the map pack also and the play day dates we will see you there yes. playing against the tmgl and the regional teams and i'm wondering since this time the map pack is uh, is from the maps that we already know already know from stage two how seriously do you think players will approach this tournament? And of course, how serious are you about it? Because to be honest, I just really don't want to see what we saw on the first All Stars. It was just very bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know because okay, the TM job players already trained the maps, of course. But I have, I'm pretty certain no one will actually like sit down hard and actually repractice them again. Um. Kind of sure, because you've had these two stages now, you play non-stop for four months, then you have playoffs, you need to sit down extra time to play the entire playoffs. And then there is like a, a two-week break. So I'm I'm thinking a lot of people will not feel a lot of pressure anymore during All-Stars. So I, um, I think we're going to see maybe a lot of PBs, people just sending times, maybe trying mm -hmm. to get the, the records back. But... Um, yeah, I think pace-wise it's gonna be all right. Maybe a, a, a couple more mistakes, um, but yeah, that's what I think. I don't think people are actually gonna sit down and re-practice lines and stuff. That, that's all right. That's what I'm thinking. At least, like maybe I'm I'm gonna revise the maps real quick, just like get into it because it's the five maps. But uh, yeah, I think level-wise it will be way higher than the first one because. Everyone's already trained on the maps, basically. Yeah. So that's uh, that helps a lot. All right. Yeah, especially at this stage, because um, yeah, at some point you just have the maps in your head. It's not like a lot of practice you can do anymore. It's just like you you run through the maps, do what you've practiced, and then you go on. That's basically it. All right. So I hope that we just will see a better. Um, tournament, a better performance from the players than in the first All-Stars, and that's probably a given because everybody already played those. Uh, but yeah, there is also another tournament going uh, going on uh, at the time. It's of course Ascension. I don't remember seeing you in the qualifiers for Paris, but uh, will you try for next one, or is it just not your cup of tea? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I've never really tried playing any of those, <laughs> those cups, so I have no clue what would happen. I don't think I would be very great at those mm -hmm. maps. They look very complicated, very tricky. And yeah, I, I've, maybe you'll see me next year. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm curious myself if I'll play them. But I'm, if I feel like it, then I, I might. If I have extra time, maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll practice them. I'm not sure though. <laughs> Nothing set in stone. All right. Uh, do you know the players that have qualified for Paris? Do you know the, the roster? Uh, yeah, I, I've seen the roster. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have maybe like uh, favorites? Do you think that uh, that will qualify for Montpellier? Maybe like three players you can list. Ah, uh, I've seen the semifinals, and one of them looked really, really stacked. And um, yeah, I think the first and second one could go like any way because if you look at the second uh, semifinal, the one with uh, Carl Junior. Bren... Gwen Granati, there's like, I think, six TMGL players in there. Mm -hmm. So then, honestly, with the TMGL players, it can go every single way possible, I feel like. Like, anyone could just take it. Someone can have, like, a huge upset because everyone's training a lot and practicing a lot. So it's always very scary either way. So, um, yeah, of course, Gwen has to be the favorite kind of still. I, I'm, I'm, it would be a huge upset to see him not go through. And then... Yeah, uh, it's called Junior Bren. They they look very trained, very motivated. So, I'm I'm seeing definitely a pass from them. Yeah, and then in the first one, yeah, I think Binks is uh, gonna make it. I feel like mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, and I think, hmm, yes, I think Skandir looks very good. Um, Vosal. Yeah, I think it could be anyone, actually. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I mean, like, I'm just going through it in my head. I feel like, yeah, there could be huge upsets. If you saw last, uh, like, last time Charlie with yeah. the almost yeah. snipe, oh. like, uh, yeah, what, what, what do you do? You know, like, it could be anyone. So we'll, exactly. we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for the interview. Do you have any short message for the fans? 
Um, nah. Well, <laughs> thanks for everyone for cheering for Oryx. Yes, and uh, I'll do the. This is the classic emote, right? You gotta do the the, the cool. <laughs> 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 no, thank you guys for watching and to all the viewers you can find all the links to complex, so complex socials in the description go and follow so maybe he will tweet more than only after the <laughs> uh, after winning league uh, but yeah uh, thank you very much for watching if you uh, enjoyed I invite you to leave a like and subscribe for more interviews in the future thank you very much again bye bye